there's some situations where there's a quantity that you're concerned about, and it varies uh, naturally depending on some direction. Uh, for example, suppose we have a microphone on a mic stand, maybe something like this. If you're standing over here, in front of maybe one yard away in front of the microphone, the microphone will uh, capture your voice very strongly. But if you're standing one yard away behind the microphone, it will uh, not be able to hear you very well. You might want to uh, come up with some picture, say a graph, to describe this relationship. So we might have, uh, we might call this relationship maybe S for sensitivity, and it depends on where you're standing relative to the microphone. So we might have a uh, our variable be theta. So say here would be theta equals zero. And then as you go around to behind the microphone, uh, theta increases until it's pi or 180 degrees. So um, S of theta, this is the sensitivity of the microphone as a function of theta. So at angle theta. Well, this is a function, and you could graph this function in the usual way. So you could put s on the vertical axis and theta on the horizontal axis. And at pi and minus pi is probably where you would want to stop drawing this. And it's going to go from some maximum value to some minimum value like this, I guess. So this would be an OK way to represent um, how the sensitivity of the microphone um, depends on the direction from the microphone to where you're standing. Um, but it sort of, it suppresses the fact that this variable theta actually is an angle. It would maybe make a little more sense to draw a picture where theta, instead of rep being represented by some abstract, abstract horizontal axis, was instead represented by an actual angle in the picture. Uh, so here's how we could do that. So we could have a polar axis, and right, so maybe this maximum value is 4 and this minimum value is 1. So at the angle 0, we could actually go out 4 along the polar axis and put a point there. You see what we're really doing is we're plotting the point, uh, we're plotting the point 4, comma, 0, but instead of using carte uh, rectangular coordinates like we did up here, 0, 4, in rectangular coordinates, instead we're using polar coordinates. And we could do that for all the other points here. So over here, pi, comma, this point right here would be pi, comma, 1 in rectangular coordinates. Well, we could plot this point where theta is pi, uh, we could plot this in polar coordinates. So the angle pi is over here, and we could go out 1 in this direction. So right there. So there's the point uh, 1, comma, pi in polar coordinates. And if you plot all the points in between, it might look something like this. And this picture, so here's the origin right here. <clears throat> this picture represent, uh, sort of is depicting if you're facing a, or if you are located at a certain angle relative to the microphone, how uh, sensitive the microphone is to uh, what you're saying. So the idea here is graph this function, but instead of using Cartesian, or instead of using rectangular coordinates to draw the graph, instead use polar coordinates to draw the graph. Uh, so this is the idea of a polar graph. That's a good name for it. In general, if you have some function that relates r and theta, so this function is called f, um, the polar graph of that function is the collection of points whose theta values can be anything, and the r coordinate has to be f of the theta coordinate. So this should look very familiar. This uh, For rectangular coordinates, if you have a function, a relationship between x and y that's described by some function, then the graph is uh, the collection of points x comma f of x. 
So you can see, and these, this is in rectangular coordinates, you can see that this is exactly the same thing, except it's in polar coordinates instead of in rectangular coordinates. Also, just because we usually put r before theta, the independent variable comes second in this setup instead of first, which is a little bit weird. Uh, so that's the idea of a polar graph. And usually you'd use a polar graph anytime your dependent quantity uh, is depending on a direction. So something like the uh, sensitivity of a microphone or the strength of a light might depend on what direction it's facing, something like that. All right, so let's look at some examples. Uh, so I posted this handout. So get a copy in front of you so we can do this example together. What we're going to do is plot the uh, polar graph for r equals 1 half theta. Okay, and we're going to do this <clears throat> at first just by plotting some points or completing this table and then plotting each point as a point in polar coordinates. So if theta is uh, 0, then r is, right, we can just plug our theta value into this equation. So if theta is 0, then this is going to give you 0 for r. Okay, now when theta is pi over 6, uh, pi is about 3, so pi over 6 is uh, about a half. It's a little bit bigger than that, but not much. This is close enough for us. So about 1 half times another half is about 0 0.25. All right, pi over 3 is a little bit bigger than 1, and so multiply that by a half, and you get something that's a little bit bigger than a half. All right, and then just keep going, filling out all of this table. Uh, so pi over 2 is about 1.5, over 2 is about 0.75, and so on. 2 pi over 3 times a half is about 1. 5 pi over 6 is a little bit bigger than 2 and a half, so uh, 1 half that is about 1.25, and then pi over 2 is about 1 and a half. Okay, so actually the, it, we could get better approximations for these by using a calculator. The actual values are all a little bit bigger than what I have written here. Um, you can fill in the second row if you want. Okay, so to get a polar graph for this, let's plot all of these points in polar coordinates. So when theta is 0, r is 0, so that's the origin right here. When theta is pi over 6, and that's this ray right here, when theta is pi over 6, r is 0.25, so that's going to be about like this. So in the pi over 6 direction, we go out a distance 0.25. Okay, now in the pi over 3 direction, that's this, this one, we go out a distance 0.5, so maybe something like this. Then in the pi over 2 direction, we go out 0.75. In the 2 pi over 3 direction, we go out about 1. A little bit more than that, remember. In the 5 pi over 6 direction, we go out a little bit more than 1 and a quarter, so like this maybe. And then in the pi direction, this direction, we're going to go out 1 and a half, so something like this. All right. And if we kept going, we'd see it be about like this, something like that. Right? Uh, of course, uh, theta doesn't jump from 0 to pi over 6 to pi over 3 to pi over 2 all at once. It actually crosses all of the intermediate values. And so really, all of these individual points that we've plotted are going to join up. Right? We were only plotting a few example points. And really, there are all of these intermediate points as well. OK. Now, one strange feature of polar graphs is um, if the domain is large enough, you can actually go around uh, more than once. So here, this point here is uh, the angle is 2 pi. 
and r is half of that, so that's pi. You can see it's uh, 3 and a bit. And as we increase theta beyond 2 pi, r keeps increasing beyond theta. So it's going to keep going like this and make this sort of big spiral. So this one strange feature of polar graphs is that there really isn't any sort of uh, vertical line test that, that like there is for uh, graphs in rectangular coordinates. You might imagine that there's some sort of radial line test where if you draw a radial line from the origin outwards, then a graph can only touch that line once. But as you can see, that is not true for polar graphs. So polar graphs can make some uh, shapes that you wouldn't expect just because uh, polar coordinates give you a little more flexibility. If you scroll down in this PDF, you'll find uh, several examples of polar graphs that you might draw. Pick a formula that you like the look of and work on it on your own. And in the next video, we'll go through what all of those polar graphs look like.